All right. Mark is taking a hit of that vape. Way to start a fucking episode. Uh, Welcome to the studio yes. corner. Well, it's actually full of crack cocaine. Oh, God. <laughs> did, did they do that? Did, well, we, did we screw up the podcast already? No, you can't screw this up. Are you kidding? It's, it's no rules. No, it's actually nothing. Actually, uh, Hyde provided it. It's, it. it's apparently nothing. It's just vape. There's no nicotine in it. I don't even know what I'm even vaping right now. It's literal vapor. I, I can't say smoking, right? Because it's not smoking. I, you I can get, say smoking if you want to. It, uh, well, Will I'm, it make you feel I'm better? Smaping. We're in the studio corner <laughs> uh, with no etiquette music. No etiquette. Hello. You call yourself no etiquette music or is it no etiquette? Just no etiquette. No etiquette, but I mean, you know, we do make music, so that makes sense. Yeah. You know, no, no etiquette music, it's all good. Uh, with Mark and Eddie. I've <laughs> <laughs> known you guys for a long time. I haven't seen you in a lot of years, and yeah, you've been we, fucking busy. We miss you, bro. We miss you. We miss you. And by we, we I mean we everything you. that I am. <laughs> I was say, There's a lot. Who's behind you? <laughs> There's a lot. Uh, oh yeah, no for there's sure. A lot here. It's good to be back here. Honestly, I remember us jamming out here in the studio many years ago. I actually used to uh, take hike to school back in high school days. I, yeah, I, I was like, "Fuck, was I a freshman in high school?" I think so. I was a junior, and you were. A yeah, freshman. yeah, I was a freshman in high school, and you used to pick me up in your little white truck and take me to school. We'd You're bump, older we, than we, him? we would bump Eminem, and you're older than Hug. Yeah. Oh, you gave me a very seduct- think, seductive think, look. Yeah. I, think, I, don't, I don't know how me. comfortable I am with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that actually you two are the same age. I'm 25. No, I'm 23. Well, goodness. There we go. Damn. For all the old people listening, I mean, They're like, oh, we do have things so to say. They're so young. They have their whole lives ahead of them. <laughs> Which probably won't be long with how we live, so. We look yeah. pretty good. <laughs> So, Eddie, Mark showed up before you, and I told yep. him, because we were walking up the driveway, walking to the studio, and I told him, I was like, you know, I have a lot of guests on, I have talked to a lot of people, I listen to a lot of bands, mm. and uh, it's not often where I put on, like, a guest music, and it's like, I usually, you know, some of it's good, like, oh yeah, I like it, I'll talk to you about it, but it's not often where I put on music, and I'm like, holy shit, I would fucking jam to this. Hell yeah. And I listened to it, and I was literally, I just had it on, like, repeat on, like, four or five songs that Spotify, like, promoted the first four, yeah. and it was just on repeat, and I was, like, so amped up by the end of this shit. Yes! Hell oh, yeah, man. And I was thinking about your name, No Etiquette, and I was like, that is the most appropriate appropriate fucking name for this music <laughs> it is so wild it is unbound it is uncontained and it just works dude that's awesome yeah, appreciate we're, we're, that, glad, man. we're yeah. glad that the brand is is speaking in that way that we you know we can is that what you were trying to get at kind of getting at yeah oh, well, i mean like Eddie and i can bounce off on each other when we explain this but you know we were thinking about no etiquette being like a um a brand of of no rules no limitations no inhibitions you know something where it's like uh you, you kind of come to our show it's an experience and and just don't don't think about the bullshit of life. You know, don't don't put on a front. You know, you go there and you experience how you want what you want to experience. And um, yeah, I mean, Eddie, you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, well, that's basically everything that I was gonna say. It's kind of just you know not giving a fuck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to say fuck here, right? You can say whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. I cuss it, a ton. Are you kidding? All right, hell yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's just about not giving a fuck and like coming to the show and just like letting, like Mark said, all your inhibitions go and just letting loose. Um, cause yeah, I think people like bottle up too much in like their day to day life and music really is a drug and it's all about just listening to music, forgetting all your problems and just like getting into it. And then we like how the, the kind of like almost punk mentality of the music yeah. comes through in the name, you know? Yeah. I mean, it very much, you know, I'm sitting here, you know, writing my notes in the studio You know, there's not a lot of, you know, simulation going on. I'm just sitting there writing yeah. notes and I have this music on. I'm just like, fuck, man, I'm like ready to get wild. I don't know what it is, but I want to do crazy shit. I was raging. We were wondering why there's paint splatters all over the ceiling and the walls. <laughs> yeah, I just had buckets of paint ready for... <laughs> like, like, I'll music. know. I'll know. I have these buckets of paint on standby in case that... that I'll know. There'll be a time for it. It'll be the right time. And I guess today was the right time. There it is. Dun Edwards. Dun Edwards. John Edwards. <laughs> who just like brings that, like calls that in the middle of it? You know, who... who Oh, Am I geez. missing something, Don Edwards? It's, it's, a, a, paint. it's a paint brand. Oh. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't know who's more humiliated, Mark or Eddie here. <laughs> Dude, I'm fine with yeah, that. We're, I'm yeah. we're sponsored by Don Edwards, so, you know, it's cool. You've been reaching we're out to you know, I, I we're kinda, actually not, not I kind of wonder because you know there's a lot of like shows where they have like paint and like the drums with paint in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what if yeah, you're a band yeah. that's all about that and you get sponsored by Dunn Edwards? That'd be crazy. I mean, like that's a sponsorship. Yeah. Rockstar and Dunn Edwards, it works. Yeah. 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 That's the perfect <laughs> brand. I, I had so this idea. Weird. I had this idea like two years ago. I was like, what if you could be the first musician that's sponsored by Tesla and like you run your entire live rig, your stage with a Tesla battery? At SpaceX. 
much. <laughs> you only play at SpaceX. But can you imagine like Elon Musk and you know comes over and like says, "Yeah, we'll fund your entire show, your live show and stuff, and it'll be all done on a Tesla battery." What type of music would it be? I don't know, just anything on stage would be pretty cool. Dude, I honestly think I would need a diaper. <laughs> I would be shitting my pants, dude. If Elon Musk came up and said he'll sponsor us, I'd be like, well, "What is going on?" I mean, on? all our problems would go right away. Yeah, yeah. Would absolutely. that have money behind you? Yeah, dude. He'd be yeah, like, but you think the here's test- a space shuttle? You think the batteries would be strong enough to oh, like fund well, that's all this the stuff? question. Yeah, would the battery be strong? Is it just one car battery? No, not the car battery. The like the home batteries that the Tesla batteries that he like uh, that would power like entire he, homes. He like mines for. Whoa, I didn't yeah. know about this. Yeah, he's got like these giant batteries that you plug in, like, and run entire entire house. Oh damn. Well, pretty, I mean, that would probably imagine be just being on stage and like you know all like those like cables and stuff is just yeah. one big old fucking battery have, like, in the back. That stacks. would be sick. That would go with some electronic music. The right? thing is though, it would probably like power up the EDC stage for like an hour. You know, what? it would probably would, like, like transform into a giant Tesla. <laughs> Mark, I yeah, like where I like where your head's at. The stage yeah, yeah. would fucking it's take a, off. It's a Tesla. <laughs> the stage would transform. We're like, oh this, shit. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, people are still going to realize we're really, really fucking weird. Are you kidding? We're musicians. We're, we're pretty normal. It's, it's fine. I've had some weirder people on here. Really? We just... Uh, no, okay. Right. We just... Uh, <laughs> give me give me one horror story uh, of a podcast that you've ever had or like a take or something that you never did or... Actually, um, you, you do all your takes raw. It's one take. Everything yeah, is straight up. Raw. I don't edit. I don't cut. The only thing I will do is... What's you, one thing you're scared of? Give me that. One thing you're scared of in- I'm scared of There's a few things There's one, one thing I'm scared of Is like I'm afraid of like Getting like an hour Into an episode Or like even 30 minutes in It's being really good And someone brings up Some sort of race Or like <laughs> thing. Like someone says something That like I don't want Being promoted Or said on my show and you're like We have to start over Well I don't even start over I'll just delete it And tell them to fuck off Like it's I'm pretty clear about Like those few guidelines Beforehand <laughs> I'm just like Get the fuck out yeah, yeah. You know oh I'm not gosh. interested <laughs> You know It's so bad But, uh, but, but it's, it's hard It's hard to get to that place You know Because you, you, you have people Come over You have people Come on your show and you want to like you know bring bring the best things out yeah. and so it's hard to like stand your ground when someone's like diving deep into their life and then they say one wrong thing you're like yeah. do I fuck you off right now or <laughs> <laughs> wait like sexually or <laughs> yes Mark sexually yeah. <laughs> we're gonna sit here and audio audio take the sex sounds of the horrible things that'll go down Eddie started with the vape <laughs> The zero nicotine for those wondering I'm not a huge vape guy I smoked hookah for 10 years and I just quit the other day and I got this vape and I hit it like once or twice a day just to get like the feeling out of it there's not even nicotine content in it and I mean, uh, I mean it so helps just dude. so just so you know I came over here first as we said it earlier in the podcast and I saw Haig <laughs> completely naked just cuddling with bottles and bottles of vape juice so I'm calling bullshit first but... off who has that kind of buddy right <laughs> and if you did why are you buying bottles and bottles of vape juice to cuddle with why right. not <laughs> what else do you do with vape juice you don't vape it apparently you not cuddle with that shit put it all over your body that is not gonna sound good on the microphones <laughs> <laughs> anyway anyways hey no etiquette man no etiquette. yeah I'm, having, I'm actually having a blast this is it's been a while since i've had this much fun this is good this is really good so i was reading your little biography you sent me and i like the whole take listeners on a journey into your world yeah and uh especially after listening to your music i was like i really want to know personally first to you guys what does that mean to take listeners on a journey into your world yeah eddie do you want to hit this one on the head yeah i mean do, do i want to what hit this one on the head yeah like a nail like bah. yeah yeah yeah. i got it i got it <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. what does that sound bah. Bah. Let, me just, let me just flex here a little bit stretch a little whoa bit. save some room for us in here all right take my shirt Jeez. off all right how you're slowing down your beer bro um your drink i mean really we just want to make it that every song that we're doing um tells a big intricate story and takes the listener just on this journey that we've curated we have this theme that that goes throughout like a lot of our tracks where we have it's like a simulated voice or something talking over something yeah i noticed and that. it's like them you know someone coming and like jacking into this like simulated experience and then you know, putting on your headphones or coming to one of the shows and just being transported to like this other world and like our world um and yeah i mean going off of like what we were saying earlier just forgetting about all the boring shit or hard shit going on in their life and then just like jumping into this like sonic world yeah, so, just, just leaving ahead. everything behind you know all the problems there's like I, like we said no inhibitions there's no there's no cares there's no no limits there's no etiquette 
Yeah, you know, we're, we're name kind of drop. <laughs> <laughs> it's your own name drop, dude. <laughs> There's no better name drop than your own I name guess, drop. Yeah. Hey, no etiquette, man. <laughs> So it, I guess I mean especially with the style of music you guys have it feels more like a portal almost like it's yeah. not just that you want people to feel what you're doing it's like you want people to listen to it and then it literally opens them up to an entire world where you guys are hanging out or yeah. like what what no etiquette we're, is we're yeah. trying to I mean yeah we're trying to make it a little bit more than just the music so that somebody does feel like something somebody does feel like they're they're a part of something like bigger than just the music yeah um and it's really it's all it's mostly based around like what we want our shows to be like Mm -hmm. you know because like electronic music is so it's made to be played live all music is but especially electronic music it's made for the like the massive speakers massive speakers and for you to experience it there like fat clubs you know stuff like that you know so we're trying to make our music and and write this like story with our music that when a listener comes and like goes to one of our shows they just feel like they're in a different world we've mm-hmm. also been like brainstorming how to do that visually as well whether it be like you know, music sh- videos and music stuff. videos yeah. and like you know uh, images or or um live show content on like you know the, the screens or whatever it may be that's such a huge part of electronic music too that like you know going to that live experience and not just the music mm-hmm. and not just the insane yeah. loudness and the speakers but you know visually it's, too yeah it's the visual experience almost like the whole the feeling mm-hmm. that you're trying to get with the music of sending them into this portal into like no etiquette yeah. world yeah. like actually being in that world what would that world look like yeah it's just one thing to do that sonically but to do that visually is is I mean in my opinion like, the best I mean that's the point of the live show brand is, is visually yeah, yeah. I love that. That's that's really really cool. I uh, I don't think a lot of people realize how important that is. I think a lot of people like want something like that, but I don't think they understand like, you know, the live show is supposed to enhance what you're already doing, like your music, enhance it and really mm. grab those people and take them there and it's like you're already starting off with that goal of taking them somewhere. Like taking them somewhere like imagine a fantasy world that you've created and built from the ground up. Yeah. And yeah. A parallel universe where these things where it's all no etiquette and you know, yeah. it's free and totally great. And it's like imagine if they could enter that and like you're physically trying to do that. Yeah. Like like I, like, like a simulation type of thing. Yeah, simulation yeah. is perfect. That's yeah. that's that's super Which that's cool. kind of been like one of our themes that. that we're that yeah. we're doing is uh entering into like our simulation and we're really trying to refine that idea. Um but yeah, again, I think just electronic music specifically goes so well with that type of stuff because it is digital by nature the way it sounds you know yeah. so like having this idea of them through this music entering into this digital world uh yeah it's just we we like that idea and we're trying to really like run with that definitely and like take them on a journey um so with any music like do you guys only listen to uh, electronic do you no, listen to do you listen, listen to everything we just do a lot a lot, a, a lot of things I mean honestly though I will be, I'll be frank that we, we primarily listen of to course. electronic music but um, yeah we, I mean we do listen to everything absolutely uh, I'll so go I'll, go ahead no go ahead I'll, I'll go like yeah most of the stuff I'm listening to is electronic music but I'll have a lot of phases where not phases but I'll have a lot of times where I'm listening to moods yeah and I grew up listening to metal because uh, yeah. my brother mm. Um, my <laughs> brother was like a huge, huge crust punk and like metalhead when he was. <laughs> you like a that? Photo? Yeah. Take a photo. Of me. <laughs> a photo. I was picking my nose, dude. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so listen to a lot of me- metal and then like '80s stuff. We're, I, I, we're I'm big. A, I'm a big '80s, 80s fan, fan yeah. for sure. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah, yeah. I love the '80s. Gotta get that cheese. Yeah, yeah that's right, baby. <laughs> oh, get dude, that, 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 like, get that cheese. Pop music and '80s like synthwave is just. Oh, oh man, so that was good. that changed the game. Yeah, I mean, that yeah, was like dude. the godfather of what exactly. you guys are doing. Yeah. You know? The new wave. Yeah, there's just something about it that like timeless and magical. Yeah. So I I really dig the idea of like you know because people I always ask people like you know what. What are you trying to get out with your music? What do you want the audience to experience? What do you, you know, what do you want the listeners to experience? And there's a lot of different answers, but fairly common, same playing field. But I think I don't think I've ever really heard the idea of getting them to be in your world, like yeah. traveling mm-hmm. on their own in your world, like mm-hmm. presenting them with an entire scene that they can live in. And I really, really love that. Do you think that when you listen to music that you're approaching it like that, when you listen to other people's music where you're like, oh, I feel like I'm in their world and experiencing it, or do you feel like you're being told something? I, honestly, I, I feel like it's 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 subjective to how I'm feeling. Like if I'm if I'm feeling 
you know, super stoked or happy. I'm like, hell yeah. Like I'm imagining me like raging right now at a show or, yeah. or, or me playing this song or whatever. Um, or if I'm feeling down and I'm like listening to like some, something that I put on for, the, for that mood, you know, I feel like it's, it's all subjective to how I'm feeling from within and it, mm-hmm. it, it reflects outwards from there. So like a song with, oh, sorry, you want to go ahead? I'll go for it. I was just going to say, I think it, it depends on a lot of things. Um, you know, a lot of artists, it does feel just like you're being told something. Mm-hmm. But then there are some artists where um, they have such a unique sound and it does feel like you're literally being brought into like their world and their head. And the first mm-hmm. one that comes to mind is, is Dead Mouse Strobe. Oh, like, that God. was the first song that I heard. We used to, that, we used that, to like, jam to that song. Yeah, that literally put me I think me, we got like, high to that song one time. <laughs> we did, probably. <laughs> probably more than, more, more than one time. Yeah, like, that's like, the first song that I remember actually taking me on a journey without even me like knowing what the hell was going on before I put it on. Yeah, there's bangers. You know, it's like my first time experiencing that. Yeah, I love that. There's there's bangers, which we still love bangers and we try to make a lot of bangers but there's there's the banger songs and then the songs that like really just like take you in and like take you somewhere and yeah we're, we're trying to blend both of them I remember was that yeah. song as a kid for me oh yeah dude I think dude. I listened to that song like oh, 3,000 yeah. times oh man there, there's so many good songs from like that era of electronic music that just like <clears throat> yeah yeah they, they just hit you in the feels and just take you somewhere well like what you were saying though because like some songs tell you yeah. Like, you know, say, take an acoustic songwriter, mm. you know, talking about a heartbreak where, like, mm. this girl literally tells you a story about what happened to him. Like, that can be a great song and you can relate to it maybe. But I think, uh, I think what's missed out is, you know, the kind of take you guys are taking the idea of, you know, exposing your world, like you said, kind of feeling like you're in their head. Yeah. I really, really like that because yeah. I want to feel like I'm in their head. Like, they could be telling me something, but word it or present it in a way that I can feel like yeah. I'm in your world and experiencing it. Yeah. Not just relate. Like, relating is good, but that's step one to me. Like, Pink Floyd, incredible example yeah like they were saying shit they were pretty specific about a lot of stuff yeah. but there wasn't a time where you didn't feel like you were living in the world they're talking about yeah you know what an incredible i mean that that's for me i feel like that's like a it's a it's like another tier of songwriting mm-hmm. yeah like another mm-hmm. level like, and step up <clears throat> yeah it really is and not that the other one's bad it's a more simple form for like you know simple mood you just want to hear someone else's yeah. story but to really experience like go down that journey you know into your world the way you guys put it i feel like it really requires that that next level understanding of yeah. presenting something so well, uh, and creativity too to, fuck yeah to also i think it's just so necessary to do that to stand out nowadays like to to honestly nowadays for better or for worse just the music isn't really enough to like make it you have to like be an all-encompassing brand that where someone feels like they're part of something bigger that's a lot of like the really successful brands like in electronic music now they all they they do make the listener feel like they're part of like this bigger experience more than just i mean either that or honestly it, it like from what i'm seeing it comes down to money well, yeah, but like, even do you think tra- this is in your some... industry? You're specifically electronic. I think I think it's what we pay attention to the most, but I think it is a bit more specifically in, in electronic music. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, you have other brands in like more traditional like band type of music where you can really get away with just the music really being good enough. But it, in like electronic music now, it's like the brands that really succeeded recently are like 1788L his whole thing is like dystopian kind of like Blade okay. Runner-esque and it's so apparent in like all of his branding it's like replicants and like yeah it, it's like it's nerdy like sci-fi shit yeah like the music goes all along with that too or like you have Marshmallow and like you know that's the biggest one dude made yeah. 44 million like in it was like what two years like from two years like last year or two years ago until like now he made 44 million and then he's already made, he made like tons more he made like 199 off of yeah. Fortnite alone off million. of like he did a skin deal but the the point is with those Crazy. two with those two people like Marshmallow and 1788 um they like both of them are their brand goes beyond just their music okay you know like people that are fans of Marshmallow i guess like they, they, he does present them with this world where, I mean, I don't pay much attention to it, but it's like, it feels like it's a nostalgic high school thing. And then like everybody has the helmets and like, there's this character 
you saw that with Dead Mouse back in the day yeah. with Daft Punk when they were more like electronic. Yeah, it's all this like. I mean, there's also two hundred thousand dollars pumped into. Motion, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's right? a, a ton of money. Off. So like a lot of there's it a ton comes of money. Yeah. Money too. Well, I mean, I think I mean I I agree money. with you guys on a certain level. Like absolutely, mm. money helps. Yeah. Uh, and branding, yeah, it is important if you want a huge fan base and if you want to have like a certain. I don't think it's the only way to make it. I no, think yeah. I do think at the end of the day, regardless of what it is, I think, especially right now. I mean, I'm calling it right now. I uh, I said this to my buddy the other day. I was like, I guarantee. So this is this is this is where I, how I see it happening. We had our record labels. We had our CDs. We had you know, people making you know these bands being huge from like record sales. You know, streaming comes out. Uh, iTunes comes out. All this stuff comes out. And like people say, it's over. It's all over. We're all gonna make nothing. And yeah, shit crashed for a while. And we had a lot of random types of music. We had a lot of birth of new types of music mm-hmm. that took a long time to become good. Um, and then social media and all this stuff started happening so so fast mm-hmm. that music kind of just was on the you know in in not in the back burner but just in the midst of it like yeah. kind of saturated into it. Um, but I think we've gotten to a point where we're so used to it, we're so over the stimulation that music is making a comeback. The actual music itself. I, I mean, like yeah. I'll say by the end of 2020, we'll be entering a renaissance of music. I think there's bands subtly and more and more every day coming back with great music and yeah, yeah they do have brands and yeah maybe some have money to back them up and yeah maybe some people are coming from nothing and making it but those stories are gonna, aren't going to mean shit anymore to me I don't I don't think it's going to make I think what's happening is people care more about the music now people want yeah. that live experience so mm-hmm. it's like if you can create great music you guys have done you know also, in my opinion I think you guys are fucking killing I love that I love, that. You, I love your you, music thank you. um, and I'm not huge huge in electronic stuff yeah. I mean I do listen to a lot but like especially at that level that kind of like the harder harder core stuff yeah. I, uh, I'm not into it yeah. but I listen to your stuff and I was I was fucking in. Uh, you hooked me, we, dude. Thank you, bro. We appreciate it. Um, but yeah, dude, I think you're right, Hike. Like, I I think that this this time that we're in is a really weird time in music. And mm-hmm. you know, we we really pay attention to, to our field, which is you know obviously electronic, as you should, dance music. Very yeah, happy right? to hear that. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yes. yeah and, and and we're noticing and we're talking to all of our peers, you know, who have great credentials. That it's a weird time. It's a really weird time that we're in. Um, you know, like you said, with the whole iTunes thing and streaming platforms and record labels and self-releasing, it's it's a it's an interesting time right now. Yeah, I was thinking about this earlier and talking about about it the other day. Uh, music went has gone through this really weird period in the past, like I think a little bit less than ten years, where it used to be the only way to make it would be to be on like a record label, yeah, and to get back in from a record label. And then, again, specifically in our scene, but I think this was probably in other scenes as well, around like 2009, maybe a bit earlier, later than that, there was like this golden age where like SoundCloud and all other streaming services started popping up where like you could do things really independently and like truly be discovered independently. Yeah, absolutely. But it seems like that in the past like four years has kind of slipped away now you have your independent labels now you have the people that yeah, support the independence like it's no well, different yeah, well, even no, weird they're now like, is like yeah. even the labels like i feel like aren't doing a whole lot of like, well see, that's what i mean the whole the idea label, of the yeah. independent release came out and you know business people mm. basically said we can capitalize like all right what if we're not a record like what if we only do independent yeah. artists oh you want to release yourself on spotify oh you know what we'll take it and we'll do all the stuff yeah. and promote it for you boom you have a record label like don't act yeah. like you're no, but we're an no, independent no label different. when people say that i'm like that, what do you what does, no that does that mean yeah. Yeah. you're know, a fucking yeah. label and, and like, then like a lot of money is like coming from like streaming now and shows yeah, like no one really buys anything anymore. Well, it's it's live. As it's far live as shows. Like, it's like CDs and, and stuff like that. Well, see, that's why I said I think we're coming into a renaissance because what happened is that because no one was making money, they all had to start touring. They had to like yeah. that's how they're making a living. And with touring and with live shows, I mean, you're not going to get any better than performing night after night in front of crowds and being judged time after time. You're yeah. only going to get better. It's inevitable. Mm. And if you're not going to get better, it means you get cut out. Yeah. And you had a lot like of people have been, of the fittest. exactly. And we've entered that realm, and now because it's so natural to have to be at that level and if you're not you're only going to last so long people are you know music's just gotten better yeah it was inevitable we're like yeah. it's like a circle it's kind of you know back in the 20s you know yeah. when you know even through the 40s like if you wanted to listen to music hmm. you got to go to the fucking club and listen to some jazz cats go crazy right yeah. we're we're back there yeah we went full circle, rock and roll, revolution, 90s, grunge, you yeah. know, 2000s, hip hop came out like a motherfucker, electronic music, and boom, mm. we're back. If you want to fucking experience it, you got to go experience it. Yeah. What a beautiful, like, change. The pendulum has swung, like yeah. it always does, you know, and like th- this shit, man, it's so, music is so cyclical, you know, these like patterns come back and then like, 
it, things get stale for a little bit and then someone innovates something and like things get really exciting again and then things will get stale for a little bit more and then someone will innovate again. Yeah. You know what's strange is it's not even music. It's it's just life. Well, it's life, yeah. I mean, like, like think about fashion trends and it, it's, it's, the, the, same it's the same thing. I think the only difference... Any art, really. Well, I think the only difference with music and everything else in the world, and I've said this a hundred times in the podcast and I'll say it a hundred times more, is music is untouchable. And it's because mm-hmm. if there was a, a painting that was you know, hanging in a museum and you had 10 different art critics, the best art critics in the world tell you that it's a piece of shit, right? Mm-hmm. Convince you it's a piece of shit. If you walked up to that painting, it wouldn't matter how beautiful you might've thought it was. You already think it's a piece of shit. Yeah. So now you're trying to convince yourself it's not. With music, because it's literal sound waves, it's physical vibration, the entire world could tell you a song is terrible. The entire world, everybody. You still feel and it. you could listen to it and without, without question, you would feel something. You could like yeah. it. Yeah. And there'd be no question. So I think music has a, has a it's just slightly so outside visceral. that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also too, I mean, with art, you, you can't really like take it with you and in, in, in your car ride and like look at it and enjoy it. You know, like like music, for example. It's yeah. It's just it's just the a wave that travels through like almost every dimension. It's and, well, it's a lot well, more accessible. Yeah. Yeah. And I've heard people like directors or you know people talking about film or other art compared to like music, and it's really interesting because like a movie. Or, yeah, I'll, I'll compare it to, like, movies. Movies can get you on these really deep levels and tell these stories that really affect you for a long time. Um, and, yeah, they can just impact you a ton and, like, stay with you. But even that doesn't really affect you the same way that, like, music does. Because music is, like, such an immediate, like... Well, think about that movie you watch. It impacts you, right? If it's no, if, there's, if it's not scored, it's gonna impact you to a certain yeah. level. But then you put the right fucking you know scoring, the right orchestra, right you know build behind something. Yeah, it becomes. I mean, you're you get the chills. You yeah. your body's just going well, nuts. Well, music is such a. Uh, it's a way more like direct, like it it, ju- it just hits you way more directly. It's almost like than other media. Everything else we experience through our conscious five senses. Yeah, right? you like take it in intellectually. Music is like our subconscious and our like you know being is experiencing it before we can consciously understand what's yeah. happening. You know, it's like it fills up our body before yeah. our minds can even it's understand. It's a drug, man. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Like more than any other art form, it really is. That was very deep. Yeah. <laughs> that was very deep. We can I go re- deeper, man. I appreciate that. One this, is, this, is, this is really nice. <laughs> I'm enjo- I, I I love these conversations. Yeah. yeah. I love I love people I love that are nerding out this. about music. Fucking nerding out, dude. Nerd out. Nerd. <laughs> um, so in electronic music, uh, production-wise, and like you know, you want to grab people, you want them to go on this journey, you want them to enter your world. Are there like specific things about a song that might do that? Like, is it a type of sound, the speed of the song, the beat, or like a lyric you'll throw in? Are there things that you're aware of that say like this is the one thing that really grabs the audience attention? What's, this is what pe- brings people into our world. Like, all those things. Yeah, like it's all those things. Like like for. Our our latest song it's called it's called New Paradigm. Listen we to have, it. Yeah, so we heavy. have that we have that vocal right, and that vocal just comes in right on on the drop, which is oh, yeah. not one hundred percent as common with a, like a talking vocal. So like it hits you like right there, with like a thick heavy bass, heavy ass drop, and the vocal is talking to you, and it's telling you basically kind of like the same thing that we're trying like to preach to the choir is to say hey, like you know you may think you have some form of control still, uh, and the rest of the vocal goes on so on and so forth. So. We think that, like, you know, vocally, that's one way to really grab someone's attention because it's a human voice. Mm-hmm. And that's the most relatable thing in music than an instrument. Something pretty memorable. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's true. Like, it, like, a human voice is the most memorable thing and most thing that you can attach onto um, uh, 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 <laughs> above anything else. Like, Sounds, guitar, drums, whatever it may be. Well, maybe a good riff. I mean, how many how many songs do you remember from a riff, yeah, but right? Yeah, it's it's I mean, different. It's, it's, like, yeah, it's, it's well, a human voice. Yeah. Well, it's like the intellectual thing versus like the like primal is that like all the other aspects like they they can be really memorable and really impact you, but they're a lot more like primal, like just speaking to that like just that like animalistic part of you. But then the words can add that intellectual part yeah. and that more relatable part mm, I love that yeah. that was and it almost gives you like really, really it like almost that. like paints yeah, I love that it almost like paints <laughs> the picture for you perfectly because you can hear it it helps tell this story of what, and it helps like refine what we're trying to tell them and almost like you know the music sets a mood that's almost like a raw canvas yeah you know it's like 
the image just there's something there's like maybe an outline and the words come in and color it and tell you exactly what's going on the fine details maybe yeah and there's like a few signature sounds too you know like some mechanical type sounds that kind of make it you know give it that like machine mechanism type. yeah so I noticed that so yeah. I was kind of like you know do you think that's a, a part of it that says like this is the world we're living in like this is what we want you to listen to this is what we want you to feel I mean are there like is there a specific sound that you guys consistently throw in or something you try to get closer to yeah, we have like a couple of effects that we usually use like the, the like the computer yeah. glitchy one and like some glitchy effects you know okay I, I, I'd say more so than like having specific sounds that we throw in though we have specific like types of sounds that we try to throw in yeah, I was, yeah I'm curious about that like yeah I mean the sonic the actual sonic elements of the music are so important in electronic music. Sound design is such a huge element of it, you know, and getting mm-hmm. the sound bass selection. just right. The sound yeah. selection, yeah. you know, getting the bass just right to have, like, the exact timbre that you want it to have to evoke the feeling and to get all these parts to, like, to work together. That I mean, that's the struggle. Is like, because you have such a giant palette... Endless. Yeah. Well. Like, then it becomes difficult to find those things on that palette that actually work really well together and we do like you know for like a, a sequence of songs we do use very similar sounds like thematic stuff yeah almost. like like we have this one like kind of like a plucky type bass like we have a couple of them that we've used consistently and like you know modified and tweaked them a bit in a lot of songs and we have a couple more that are coming out with that same sound and like New Paradigm is pretty similar to our other song like Going, Going. yeah ex- exactly it's exactly it's a similar vibe that we wanted to evoke and we, so, some of you have the yeah. same sounds yeah and I mean a lot of times we That's actually try have the same guitar tone right yeah yeah we we try not guitar. to <laughs> we try not to use the same sounds as much or, or that much but um it is important though to like yeah well, I think, I, think I, I personally I think I appreciate that yeah. I appreciate the idea that you you find a sound that means something that says to you like this is what we're about. We can fuck mm-hmm. with it a little bit. We can maybe compress it, throw reverb on it, mm-hmm. or whatever it. Uh, but we'll have different melodies. It'll be a different song, but this is a sound that we want yeah. to bring in. It's like it's like for me when I'm playing guitar. Like maybe I'm doing some heavy metal tracks. I find a fucking kick ass, you know, yeah. distortion, the right guitar sound. Like yeah. why not use that on all my songs? It's all different songs. Yeah. But like I like this. This is the distortion yeah, I want. Yeah. Or you use it like minimally on another song. Like like a little like like on a bridge for another song. Like yeah. It's, it's not like I'm playing there. the same riff on every single yeah, song, no, 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 right? I hear you. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I, I, I appreciate that. I like that a lot. I think, uh, I mean, I'm a diehard Nine Inch Nails fan. I think Trent, oh, Rez- yeah, Trent Reznor is like the... Nine Inch Nails. Oh, dude, I got fucking right here. Look yeah, at this. Right, right here. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got tatted. Dude, that's oh, what's yeah, up. tatted Nine Inch Nails. Um, but he's like a mass, like the fragile, the, the sounds, like there's a consistent mm. sound. Yeah. You know? yeah. And that's Even on his newer EPs, Brandon like Dalton. they're so thematic. Well, that's what makes like... Like like we were saying, his artists... Well, yeah, and, and that's what makes electronic music different from, like, bands, is that there you are typically using such different sounds from track to track, and it makes it hard to actually, like, sonically brand yourself because you're using so many different sounds. Yeah. But I think that the people that really stand out are the ones, and we're actually trying to do this more, are the ones that use very similar sounds in all of their stuff because that's how they brand themselves as yeah. them. Sonically. That's, that's yeah. fucking, that's genius. I think, I think yeah, anybody I mean, like, that works with electronic stuff needs to remember that. No, 100%. Yeah. And like, it's something that we struggled with a lot like over the last, wait, like year and a half but we've, we've honed in on it more. It's a, it's a continuous thing. Yeah. Because we also get bored with sounds too. So we're trying to find the ones that really, yeah. yeah. Like synth, like a yeah. synth riff from scratch? Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. do you don't ever sample anything? No, we do. do. Oh, no, we do, we do. Do you we have do. like, you know, uh, the pre-installed stuff or no, anything like No, well that? like, one thing we use is, it's called Splice. It's like a, it's like a platform online that is royalty free, membership, monthly subscription based um, samples. You get like So credits. you pay like seven ninety nine a month online. and then you, you, you get like a hundred credits a month. Yeah. And then you can you know download like, I mean it, it, there's so much stuff like actually the, the new paradigm vocal, I actually got that from Splice. And but for the most part, you it. guys you know take a synthesizer and you guys yeah we we use Serum, mostly yeah, yeah. and Massive and Operator. I love Massive. So yeah. my God, I love Massive. It's so good. So <laughs> typically like you love drums. <laughs> I love Massive. <laughs> Who doesn't? Massive. Come on now. A massive is amazing. Drums. Uh, 
drums will obviously use samples and then just like some battery uh, fuck with them and like process them a bit yeah or battery just from spice just look up whatever we want seriously though spice is like it's so spice is a lifesaver it's actually it pisses me off because like when we started producing music we didn't have anything like that we had like the vengeance sample packs yeah we didn't but we didn't even know where to go for sample packs in the beginning yeah we were just like I don't even know I don't even know where to find a kick and I had to get it from music school like people were like passing it around I'm like I'll take it USB drives like yeah I was like give me that shit right now and then uh, we uh, we had this moment where, like way back in the day, we were trying to make big room. Um, like the bomb, 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 like animals, bom, 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 you know, old Martin Garrick stuff. Yeah, and we didn't really know we, what we were doing, and then we found this like vengeance sample pack and downloaded it, and it had all these samples that had, we like, had heard drops and like yeah. drums and these samples and, like, that we had heard a million times, and we were like. Oh, we found it. We're gonna make it. And, and like, then big room dead. Yeah, and then big room dead. <laughs> well, not really. It's still so big, but it's we hard, lost it's hard, it's hard all the interest too. in it. Yeah. Um, but going back to the synth stuff, really quick, like, what we'll usually do is for like the main bass or main thematic thing in the track, like we make that all from scratch. And usually, like the stuff and the breakdown and the melodies, that's all synth from scratch. But <laughs> but, fucking vape uh, <laughs> guy over here <laughs> but then for like fills and what we call gateways which are like fills on the one right before it drops it's just like boom we call it, it a gateway yeah. okay. like, after that sequence boom a gateway we have like weird names for it dude yeah. it's really, I know I like this yeah. keep going I'm it's digging funny. this This is. we have like water breaks or like the parts right before the breakdown if it's different than the drop kind of like a chill out thing yeah. you know, like, 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 like gets you ready it's like all your dynamic our, our terms friend, yeah. our buddy Marcus uh, he actually mentioned he that come? you know Marcus Barnaby yeah yeah, yeah, Barnaby. yeah like he goes to the gym yeah, yeah. Didn't he, everyone goes to the fucking gym I don't know. He just he was said talking it. about like he's like, like water break at a festival. Like, uh, yeah. Water break. He's talking. I think yeah. like at a festival when like you're going there and then like the part that's like not that exciting in the song. Like you know that the drop is over, but it's still kind of going a little bit, and you're like, I'm gonna go get water. That's I think that's break. where it came up. Or sports. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Or sports. <laughs> uh, yeah. We we do a combination of like it's samples awesome. and synth stuff. Like for the main thing, since sa- the sound design is so important in the stuff that we're doing. Hell yeah. It's like, really like, important to like make a, your even own. Even like effect sound we'll make too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, build up sounds or like we have this we, we had this one signature screech we always use. Yeah. It's like a geisha screech. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna try and mimic it because I'd probably butcher it. But Did you say a geisha screech. Yeah. It was like it was like, it was like a. Like a we, Japanese we, we, We've had like three. Yeah, so, we've like, we've I'd had like, had like th- we've had like three people comment on our SoundCloud. Love that geisha type screech, and I'm like, I kind of like on. that. No, what wait, the fuck is on. a geisha screech? They're saying Gasafelstein. No, 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 they're not. I'll show you later. What they're saying, geisha what? screech. Yeah, but how? I mean, I don't know. Gesa, 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 as in Gasafelstein. No, 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 no. I would just no. Well, well, okay, before we set, pull up the laptop. What geishas? In. What geishas are screeching? I don't know. I don't know, but I liked it. I liked it. I liked I mean, it. I, I liked the way I thought, it sounds. I thought it was cool. Geisha screech. Okay. Yeah, I was like, this is kind of cool. But anyways, though, it's okay, like a, it's almost later. like a, it's like a high pitched, like kind of like hawk type thing that like comes in like super <laughs> reverbed out and like, it's pretty sick. But um, we kind of stopped using it though. We've been using it in a while. Yeah. We use like modified versions. Yeah. Um, I'm very happy to hear that you guys are making your sounds though. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I mean I'm not involved in the electronic world as much as you guys are, obviously, but I feel like it's, a lot of that is kind of getting lost. The idea of starting from a you know, well, there's a so wave. Much. Well, that's a, that's one way of like making your own sound. Is making well, I think that's sound. so important yeah. because in electronic yeah, world, yourself, yeah. well, in like le- 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 in the electronic world, there's so much sampling. There's so much you know these mm. presets and all this stuff like. Like who are you to use all this stuff? Yeah. Just stuff that's already well, you been just, made. It's so saturated, and you just sound like everybody else. Yeah, it's that. like to make to really know what it is to make your own sound. Like that's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah well, I, it's just again in specifically in like the genre of electronic music that we're doing. Um, it's so important to be making like your own. Yeah, your own stuff. Well, what would you call out. your genre? It's mid tempo. We're branching mid-tempo. out into just more like bass. Bass music, music though. though, like uh, you know, like some like heavier kind of stuff. Definitely would be kind of cool to do a little bit of trap, a little bit of dubstep, but you know, it's what, what's so important though, is whatever we do to branch out, whatever that subgenre might be, it's so important to make sure that it still holds the integrity of the no etiquette sound. Oh, I love that because without without that, I mean, we kind of lost ourselves. You know, you have to really brand ourselves, and and mid tempo is awesome, and it's it's gonna go, but all good things, you know, they do kind of. 
you know, roller coaster down and kind of die off a little yeah. bit. So it's important to be able to branch out into other types of music uh, within EDM, within that, that genre of bass music, but, but yet all the while still holding on to our sound. You know what I love? I'm very, very happy to hear. It sounds like you guys have a message that you're trying to, you know, you have a message you want to get across, mm -hmm. but you're literally doing that purely through your sound. Yeah. yeah. And that is not something most people can say. Yeah, that's cool. Though. Thank you. Very I, 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 I appreciate it because, I mean, honestly, like, look, having a podcast about music, like, this is not for promoting. This is not for, like, you know, when your next gig, this and that. Like, I, you know, that stuff works mm. its way into the conversation. Yeah. And I appreciate it. Like, I love, but it's, like, about, you know, building a creative community, exposing it, getting deep, you know, talking about these, you know, nerding out on things. And I get so many people hitting me up on Instagram, Facebook, like, hey, I think my band should come on. Oh, hey, I think I should come on. Yeah. I'm an artist. I'm an artist. And I'm always, like, I always ask them, like, all right, well, here's the email. Like, contact me through this. Like, tell me why you should be on it. Mm. And, like, it's always, like, the same shit. Trying First off, 90% of them don't even, don't even hit me up. Like, don't even send me an email. Yeah. Uh, the other 10%, it's always, like, okay, well, I've done this, and I do this, and, you know, I'm working on a new EP, and this is what's coming out. Mm. And I'm, like, you guys just, like, miss the point. And then I, every once in a while, I'll get, like, links to, like, their stuff. And I'll listen to it. And I'm like, look, it's not bad. Some of it is bad. Some of it is good. <laughs> you know, whatever, everything in between. But it's also like, I don't understand why I bring you on. Like, what is your message here? Yeah. It's not that you need a message, but like, you know, there's got to be something well, here. Some you substance. Want them to have some meat and potatoes. Yeah, meat and potatoes. Substance. Meat, meat yeah. And you don't want them to just be another like copycat. Another. Well, it's also like if you come on, like if we if we sat here and we did not talk about your music the entire time, what would we talk about? Like, what are we going to conquer? What are we going to tackle? Like, what are we going to dive into? I mean, I'm sure we could actually probably do that, to be honest. Well, we're all, you and I, you got, you, us, we are doing that. Like, I like what we're doing. <laughs> I mean, honestly, but it's good. like, I really like the fact that you have this message and it's so important to you because it's not like you guys are standing, trying to say like, oh, this deep thing, like, you know, F the world or like this and that. But it's like, hey, we have this vibe we're going after and we, no matter what we do, we don't want to lose that. And the only way we can do that is have a sound. Yeah. Hey, it's actually, so raw. We, we actually, we actually need to get you on a track. Oh, I love doing samples oh, yeah, on electronic right. stuff. Oh, we yeah. just I, I love bringing the guitar on the electronic actually, stuff. We actually, oh, we actually do. Don't we actually get me do. Started. We, do, we do need to do that. We have bro. two of our homies. Um, shout out to Hot Collar and 100 Hertz. These guys, like, they're they're amazing, really talented uh, producers. And super and, cool people, too. I mean, yeah. <laughs> cool dudes. And both of them do, like, a lot of heavy metal stuff. Fuck yeah. And, like, their electronic stuff. Yeah. Well, like, our buddy Hot, Hot Collar. Collar did a, yeah, it's like raining blood. What? That one. What? It got played so yeah. many times. Red, I gotta hear this. It oh, it's so sick. It's actually really. I dope. might have heard it's it. Really dope. <laughs> and and yeah. So, how was I saying? Oh yeah, because we gotta get you on a track. Dude. Well, no, dude, like we we'd love to blend that. Type bro, of shit. Can, have you ever heard Hag Sh Hag Shred? Like, dude, years he, ago. Oh no, dude. <laughs> well, actually, no. On pretty, Instagram, I've, I've no, watched your videos. It's actually like, like nuts. it's actually like oh, yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah. I'm like, yo. That's I appreciate insane, it. Dude. No, I'm Thank serious. It's, it's actually it. a gift, dude. It's far, it's nuts, dude. Yeah, dude. dude. <laughs> like I'm like, that's crazy. Like I can make something sound really dope, like on a computer, but I cannot do that. Oh, yeah, well, I, I appreciate that, man. Like that. I can plug in my guitar and like bing, hit bong, a few bing. notes here and there. <laughs> I can play a G <laughs> and an E and a C and a D and that's about it. D sharp. That's about it. <laughs> D sharp. <laughs> all, all the sharps. That one little pinky motion right there. But that's. I appreciate that a lot. I appreciate it. Um. So collaboration, mm. you guys have collaborated with a few people, a lot of your tracks. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of curious because I don't really know a lot about the, I mean, I know as a, as a guitar player and a songwriter, like collaboration, you meet with another songwriter mm. or this and that, but like with electronic music, do you, do you like create a track and then you send it to someone else to fuck with or do they meet you in the studio or how does that Dude, all, it, it, depends. it depends. Like for our, our collab, what do you prefer? With, I mean, in person is awesome. Like, so we have, we're working, we're working Sorry. on one right now with, um, this guy named One True God, OTG, super cool dude, and like we actually just met at the club, right? And he played one of our songs, and we went up to him and we said, "Dude, thank you so much for supporting us. You're, you're awesome. We killed the set." And then he's like, "Hey, like we should kick it in the studio." So we did, and we were just kind of like messing around in there. And he's like, "I like this track that you guys are working on. Send it over to me, and you know we'll we'll do like a little collab." And that's how that started, you know, like in the studio, face to face, which is awesome. So you send him a track, he fucks with it and sends it back to you. Uh, I mean. Yes and no. Like we're in the studio together, and then like you know he we share the session with him. But oh, okay. on the other on the other side of things, our our collab with Tommy Sunshine, we did uh, exactly what you just said. We we, we sent it over, and uh, that's how the collaboration process was. Because he lives in New York, so obviously we didn't meet. <laughs> so you know we sent things back and forth yeah. to each other. So uh, I I kind of prefer having something like 
having a, an idea, you know, a whip, a work in progress, like kind of figured out a little bit, like the mm-hmm. central idea, and then send that over to somebody or them to send uh, that to us um, instead of like meeting in the studio. And then af- after that and after things are fleshed out a bit more on both of our, our ends, um, meeting in the studio and then going from there, because just the nature of what I we're doing, that. there's yeah. so much... There's so much like engineering and sound designing that you need to do. That's just tedious shit. Yeah, yeah that's like it's exactly just, what we said about One True God. Like, yeah, we had stuff pulled out. Well, it's just like and he picked one. What we're, I, I mean, it, say if we're writing a drop, writing like a breakdown in an intro, that's more kind of, at least for for me and I think for us, it's more free free flowing because. It's not as much really intense, tedious like sound design. You yeah. can just kind of write musically more stuff, you know, because um, by nature those parts tend to be more musical. And then once you get to the drop, it's more crazy weird sound design. Okay. And Technical. for that stuff, it's like it's it's hours and hours and hours, maybe spread across a few days to like sound design something that sounds really cool that really works for you, and then plug that in. And it's just not practical to sit in the studio and do that with somebody. I know some people can do that. It's just not the yeah. way I like to work. I like to have, once that is all done, and we've spent a lot of time on our own, like, fucking around with that stuff, after that's formed in and we have, like, the building blocks, then go into the studio and, like, work with those building blocks. I dig that, though. I, I like yeah. that. Because, yeah. I mean, it's such a, like you said, there's so much out there. Mm. It's, it's kind of better. It's like sending an outline to each other. Yeah. Like, hey, let's get on the same yeah. page. This is what we're about. This is what we're getting at. Let's meet mm. up and fucking conquer it. Yeah. I like that. It's pretty like, cool. Like, you don't want to be in the studio, like, meeting up with somebody. Um, Not knowing what you're doing. Well, Dude, I well, can't tell you. I freaking... I worked, I not worked, I volunteered as mm-hmm. I call it. It was an opportunity, right? Yeah. I was at Universal Records working with some songwriters mm-hmm. and I'd show up at like 8 p.m., 6 to 8 p.m. We'd go to like 2 to 4 in the morning. Yeah. And I'd show up and I'd be like, all right, what are we doing? They're like, all right, just play something. Yeah. And I'd have to like come up with some fucking shit right on the spot and the guy would just write lyrics and then we record that song yeah. that night. And like, I was cool. Like, it was, I was that young. That can be fun. I was young. I was like 16, yeah. 17 years old. So I felt like I was really cool. I was in the studio till like 4 in the morning, Universal Records. Was, yeah. you know, I felt like a cool guy. But looking back, I'm like, that was the most ridiculous waste of money for whoever the fuck yeah. was funding that. <laughs> I mean, and what a shit show. Yeah, it can be fun, and like that's definitely a skill to be able to do that, um, to be able to go in the studio like that and then actually come up with something. Yeah, for sure. But at the same time, it's like you know, if we if you're if, like if I'm gonna sit there and start writing with you, like we have to have some yeah. sort of connection. Well, we have different. to build a relationship. Yeah. And it's like if we're gonna spend the time, we're gonna come down. Like we can write somewhere else. Yeah. Like if you let's let's make this happen. Let's spend some time and then let's come mm. into the studio. Like if you yeah. want to do this, like let's meet up beforehand. Let's write a song. Let's work on it, and then we can take that studio time and record. Well, they, like, they stress that too. At, like at, at MI Musicians Institute, yeah. they, they stress like pre-production before going into the studio. Oh well, yeah, you gotta. It's have such it. a waste of time if you go in there and you know like spend your studio time. Trying to figure out what should go Trying to figure out what to do. And, you know? and like a jam session is different than like... A yeah. studio session. Yeah. Very, very different. Um, but yeah, I was going to relate it to like if you... If you're meeting up with like another band or, you know, someone to work on like a track, you don't want to spend the whole entire session figuring out what type of like distortion or different pedals that you're going to be using. Yeah. You know? It's kind of akin to that. Like it's... Yeah, it's like that, that should have been taken care of a long yeah. time ago. Yeah. It just needs to be more clear and driven. <clears throat> Yeah, but so to answer your question, uh, it honestly really depends on like the location of where these, this person is, you know. Okay. So, like, like for example, and the vibe and, like for example, yeah. like you know, we did another collab with um, our homie Lick. Uh, his name is Josh. His stage name is Lick, and we only we sent it back just back and forth, you know, via WeTransfer dot com, whatever. Yeah. And then it would would send updates and then would send it back and then we would do something and then send it back and we'd do something and then send it back, vice versa. Cause he you know, he lives in I think like Arizona. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he lives in Arizona. Yeah. So we would just send it back and forth. Because it's not practical to meet in the studio whenever you're you know, two states. No, away. yeah, I mean, I think it's a really cool concept, especially with electronic stuff, because like you mm-hmm. could just sit there and do it back and forth. You know, because like with live recordings, like you have to have a place to record. You know, yeah. You know what's crazy yeah. is that like, I've noticed that some singers now what they do is they you know ask you to send them over something, and they'll just record their vocals and send it back to you. I know. I, what, what, what do you I, mean? What I what I've realized is that that's how things are done a lot of the times. 
and whatever I was just doing it, you know, back in music school, obviously we would record them there. Or like when I was working at the studio. In, in oh, you uh, mean like they would just notes. do their own vocals and send you yeah, the vocal and send, track. Yeah, and send it over. Like, yeah. Recorded and everything. Like, you know, well done too. Yeah. Which was interesting to me because I always thought about it as, you know, getting the artists into you know, the vocal Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of. Recording them there. Like, I kind of prefer that though. Same, same. Wait, which you prefer having them Wait, in the studio? Yeah, I mean, bringing them, especially yeah. like something like a raw like recording, like be able to yeah. like communicate with them. You know, well, that's I think that's yeah. really important. Unless they're just they just they're the shit and they really know what they're doing. Yeah. But even then, especially with a vocalist, you really want it to be like pretty collaborative. Well, that's the other thing. It's like it's also something that's another pre-production thing. Like you have to know what they're gonna sing, what the melody is, what you get. Yeah. At, you know. Well, and then discuss maybe, that. Maybe you're in there, and then like something come, something that they do or something that you do comes to mind, and you're like, oh shit, what have you tried this? Way? Yeah. Like, like, have a can you give here. me a take like this? Or yeah, yeah, it's a huge part of it. You're like, yeah. oh damn. Or what if we slow this down? Or yeah. Something. Or anything really. If we honestly. had a harmony here, that would be really cool. Or like maybe I need to change this chord progression a little bit because it's just not working and then they have to sing a different note or sing something a bit differently yeah. there so I, how do you I personally choose like it you know in, in the, choose you know, what? face-to-face how do you how do you choose a singer like you guys obviously have vocals on your tracks like how do you well, choose the right singer? frankly Besides, a lot of them are singers. besides the one with tommy sunshine that was an actual artist that he provided okay so that was how that one got you know in the works but other than that every single song has been from splice really it's yeah. all sampled vocals or and stuff. or uh, another like vocal generator, okay. Plugin. Yeah, I actually a lot of the. Do you guys ever put your vocals on there and like fuck with it? Actually, yeah, 2012. Two thousand twelve. Two thousand. I knew that was you. <laughs> yeah, that was you, right? Yeah, I knew that was you. I was, was, you. I was like, two, I think that's Eddie. That's two thousand twelve. Yeah, I remember that. I was dying, dude. Yeah, that. That's funny. Ooh, I, I it's it's so funny listening back to that. I'm like, oh, oh and 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 in our, our our chop it remix. I whisper no etiquette in the. Oh my into, goodness! Into the computer, into, yeah. It, and into it's the computer, that, and that was that like stuck. It was literally recorded it through the computer laptop speakers. It's something that we want to do more in the future. Is like, you know, because as we as our technical skill gets better, like we we can make a shitty vocal sound really good, and that's the beauty yeah. of it. Is like we're not doing it live. Um, Hike slipping us off. Yeah, I just saw that. What the fuck? Because you're looking over at my page trying to see if I spelled shit right. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm just gonna leave now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we actually don't have that many like singing vocals on our on our. Track. Would you like? To? I would like to change that. Honestly. Yeah, I, I mean the thing is finding a good vocalist, especially for the like, type of music you're doing. Like there has to be. Yeah. It's, it's it, so it's, specific. It, yeah, yeah, it really is. They all have you know a certain type of sound. Yeah. It's it's more so like it complements the track rather than the track complements the vocals. Yeah, exactly. Which is yeah. a very interesting thing for singers to wrap their heads around. You know, that's that's the challenge. That's I feel it like really that's going to be a challenge in itself. To I mean, there are, there, egos, there, right? there I mean, are, we all have an ego singers, to a yeah. certain extent, oh, but right. like vocalists, it's like you know I'm bringing in like it's I don't these know. Are, these are my pipes. There's a different. No, there's like, different well, they vibe need to it. understand the. Not all the time, and on some tracks, like some electronic tracks, like they are the lead part of it. Yeah, yeah, but. In a lot of the different things that we're doing, they need to not they're, be. They're like part of the story and part, and they're like, uh, it sounds it sounds bad saying this, but they're like an instrument in it. You know, that's, that's yeah. not bad. That's exactly yeah, what yeah. they are. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. what they are. That's what they are. And no. like, but yeah, I mean, like honestly, there are a lot of singers who understand that, and they 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 do market themselves as, as like an you know an EDM. Vocalist. Yeah, we just gotta find. That's a crazy concept, it. right? Yeah. Like I'm an EDM singer. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just be able to like you know mark yourself as that. It's yeah. kind of a crazy thing. Well, I, I think I think the uh, the the real way to do it, and we don't have enough pull for this right now, is to find somebody who is like a is their own act. Yeah. And then get them to feature on a track. Or uh, what we need to do, which we just haven't looked hard enough, there are so many talented people out there that just aren't discovered yet. We just need to look at our like, old like, music school. Yeah, well... well those, are, those are like in the singer program. Mm, well, and this artist, Joyride, um, huge like house artist. House and I guess Bass he does house. some trap. Yeah. Um, he just recently had this, this kid, this 20-year-old like gold... Is his name on uh, one of his tracks, uh, rapping on it, um, and the kid's really good, and he has like 200 SoundCloud followers. Like he's he he has he just hadn't been on anything, and then Joyride just somehow found him. So like, yeah, hey, like, I like your shit. Yeah, and like 
I don't know the backstory, but maybe like I'm sure you said yes immediately. Maybe yeah. he <laughs> maybe he knows somebody that knows somebody or something. Yeah. But you know, um, that's really the way to do it. And then we've done our other tracks that have like actual vocal vocals on it. They're like remixes. Yeah. That yeah. We've done. Which obviously so, like, are like legit, legit artists. Yeah. yeah, we find the stems and the acapellas and yeah. So. And just remix that, remix them and go crazy with it. Yeah. yeah. So there's two of you. Mm. Um, do your yeah. roles? There there's no, there's only one of us. We are one. We are, one. <laughs> one. <laughs> we are no etiquette. <laughs> so what are your roles? Like, uh, do you guys differ? Like, does Mark do drums? Do you do bass? Do you, you know what? Sounds like you said, does Mark do drugs? Does Mark do drugs while you make the music? You know, <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, oh, classic man. Matt Damon, Ben no, Affleck kind of thing. Honestly, yeah, exactly. honestly, dude, like we we primarily just work on music, like a lot. That's all we do is just work on tunes. Well, so, and like, then, so like, walk me through that. Like, do you just like you're fucking around on your computer one day, and like, hey, AD, I wrote this new cool new track. Yeah, like the bones are there, the structure's there, and then we you know I make like you know three or four of them. And then we, we go through them and we're like, this one sucks, this one sucks, this one's good. Let's run with this one. Your mom's calling me. Yeah. <laughs> Does your mother know where you are? Yeah. Anyways. Um, I should need a text. You go ahead and text your mom back, Mark. You okay, talk to yeah, me. Yeah, so anyway. <laughs> we're just supposed to meet them for dinner. So anyways, yeah. So, Sorry, mom. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll pick one. I'm like, hey, these, this one's actually really good. Let's, let's do this. And then, you know, I'll get to a place to where I'm like, all right, cool. I'm, I'm happy with this. And then I send it over to Eddie, and then he'll put his his touch on it, he'll take some things out, add some things in, spice some things up, mm. and then um, that's one. That's like one of the many ways. But it's not really like a set process. You kind no. of just like no, no. it happens. No, and then yeah. there'll be something that like you know like Eddie will work on, and then he'll be like, "What do you think about this?" And then I'll give my creative input on it, and then that's a, another way a track will it, will come into the works. I mean, there's there's it, that's like, that's honestly like kind of like. The, two biggest ones it used to be well we used to oh my gosh <laughs> back on, in the day yeah on all of our tracks actually sit down and work on them together um sounds exhausting like like yeah like, like from the very beginning like first kick drum like yeah it's like that first child that parents always talk about where yeah. they're super paranoid and everything's got to be perfect and by well, the time they have the third or fourth kid it's it like was that thing. well and then again like i was saying earlier with like the collaborative process with like other artists is like there's a ton of tedious shit yeah because we don't have a set set group of samples for our drums that we always use. So there's a ton of time just spent looking for the right drum sample. Yeah. And it's the most boring shit. And then if you're doing that with somebody else and you two are just sitting there and you're going through your sample library and you're like, no, 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 mate, nah. Six hours it, it, Honestly, it, no. it, it yeah. slows down the workflow. Like, like, if there's two of us, why would we not both be working on something at the same yeah, time? Yeah, and just by the nature of... Like, you're not exactly jamming out, so it's a lot of, like, just, fuck, like, fucking around for ages until something kind of piques your interest, and then you, yeah. like, follow that thread. Yeah. And it's, that's a lot more difficult to do with... When you're constantly worried about someone else's opinion. Yeah. Like, what are and they like, going to grab onto? And, like, we're comfortable with each other. It's not like, it's not like we're crazy aware <laughs> oh yeah for the, for the listeners Mark just gave us the most seductive look ever <laughs> it's how you got undressed <laughs> that quick so wow me. this podcast really shifted um there's candles Someone say everywhere shafted. hi whoa whoa where hey, are the roses coming from the paint <laughs> we're back on the paint the chocolate Don't spread Don't 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 is here <laughs> full circle oh, the guys. bourbon's coming out oh yeah um, bourbon's out baby uh <laughs> That's the nickname for my uh No, but yeah, like we're super we're super comfortable with each other and um Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, like it's 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 easy, God but like it's it's gotten to the point now where like, you know, we we are we're able to sit down and like work on a tune, you know, either like solo and then or, or together and like, you know, we were able to hash out an idea pretty I mean, I would say pretty quickly. I mean, we've been doing it for so damn long, yeah. so it's like, you know, we kind of know each other. Kind of know the process too. Or like in, like know each other and also like we know the the process of creating you know a new a new no etiquette track. So how do you know when it's finished? When it sounds right. Like do you guys both <laughs> you guys both have to agree on it though. Oh yeah 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 and we basically we know it sounds right once we do like we call them, we call them car test 
Well, that's how we know. Oh, dude, everyone has a car test. Yeah. That's the ultimate test yeah. of everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. how we know it's right on a technical level. Yeah. But, like, um, we even vibe. Like, yeah. Like, honestly, like, for me at least. It, yeah. Honestly, like, we know when it's ready, when it's ready. Like, I don't know how. Yeah, I feel I, you. I, I feel you. I, you know, I, I get it. Like, it's just, like, it's just. When it makes well, especially when you're working with someone else, it's kind of like a you just know when you know. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. that's, that's, yeah. Me, that's me. That's me that's, personally. I don't know. I don't know if you 100% feel that same exact way. Yeah. I don't. I mean, like there's, there's not like a checklist for me of like when it's ready, it's ready. It's, it's when it sounds ready to me, then it's ready. Yeah, I feel like the checklist kind of comes in the production. Yeah, you know? I, I mean, it's just kind of something that you that you feel. I, yeah, I don't weird. think it's I've weird. ever that's had a, weird, a hard that's a weird time. question. I like that. I've heard that. I literally have checklist written yeah. on my uh, notes yeah, here. It's a weird. It's a weird question. Is it highlighted in green? No, it's under the highlighted ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh, like so my little note page? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like the you know sub. It's like yeah, sub importance. Okay, I got you. I got you. It, I, it's like it's a very hard question to answer though so I mean don't <laughs> it's just a feeling I yeah. mean and also it, it is kind of like uh, uh, okay for instance working on working on like the the build and the outro that's all people game. that are listening are just gonna think that you're laughing at me no, no, we're no. laughing at Mark taking vape no, hits. laughing at me. No, we're laughing at Mark yeah. taking outros. vape hits every fucking five seconds. <laughs> Who makes outros anymore? Actually, well, that's like I'm, intros and outros. I feel like Damn especially Mark. what you're doing are like almost uh, yeah, are uh, no, I'm like the vape. another well, song. Yeah, you know, well, it's like has had that much care. Well, and uh, you fuck up the thing. Also, one important thing is that like it's this music is made for like DJing, mm-hmm. so it's like does this part have enough tension for the the outro does this is this part interesting enough does it have enough tension that someone's gonna play it in a set mixing in another song and it's gonna carry on the energy and work or is it able is it quick enough to get out of for the next song yeah like that's something we're realizing more and more lately is is making our tracks like super dj friendly like being yeah. able to blend them yeah or just you know drop them out or play or play them and, and tra- transition them easily because that's actually something that's a big problem like with a lot with like some songs it's like it could be it's really a dope sick. song but how the frick do you how do you but DJ it just this? like you work. don't just end the song and then start a new one like you have to transfer into a new one like mid like transition yeah so yeah I mean there, there's you, you, there's ways of just getting creative with that but it's like going from section to section in the song it's like in, in electronic music uh, it's really important that the sections are very well I mean I'm speaking pretty generally but mm-hmm. and like of course there's exceptions but what we found with like songs that sound really good djing is like there's sections that are each section is very uh well defined and pronounced mm-hmm. so it's like my section like bars yeah no, I get yeah, you, yeah so like so you know there'll be an impact or or just something that makes it so that when you're djing that you could drop it in there and like the energy keeps going yeah, yeah. and uh like the build is like super, you know, like everything yeah. has intention. There's an intention of to yeah. everything put in. Yeah, it's and, good, and honestly, it's like a good flow. Yeah. It's like things still flow into each other, but but still grab you. Yeah, and like keep it going because okay. it's all about all music is like this, but especially with electronic music, since it's all about the build ups and the drops, it's all about building up the tension and then releasing it. Like so, constantly it's a pull. So you know? the concept of the drop. I mean mm. it's like the where drop. electronic music really made its name. I mean yeah. that's what like separated it from all other things. Yeah. You know, the eighties synth became, you know, yeah. its own thing because there was a drop. There was this essence of taking away what we built and bringing you into something else. Yeah. So like what is the drop? Like the concept of it, I want to know everything you want to I want to hear everything two guys that make electronic music have to say about the drop. So like look, like let's it like let's just make sounds like good. a little movie, right? <laughs> like like you you walk into the the opening scene that's like, you know, the intro. And then from the intro you go into like maybe something like like climaxing in the movie. It's like a um uh the build up in the song, right? Mm-hmm. And then from the build up you have like, you know, the the main impact of the movie it's is the drop and then from the drop it goes you know back down to like maybe the breakdown again or like a little like what we would call a water break where it's kind of like you know easing you back into uh what's going to come so the next. drop is necessary 100 percent. drop is like the conflict it's, in the movie it's the whole it's the whole um anticipation of why there's a build-up the drop you know, is the is, is anything about sex, it man so like <laughs> you, you need perfectly so that. like yeah, like perfectly think sad. about it like this like there's tension and release if you have so much tension where's the release 
So it's almost in order to make the type of music you're making, you have to have that tension and release. Well, and it's, it's dancing I mean, music. Well, yeah, because like, there's a lot of like electronic music mm. with electronic, you know, samples and things like that don't have drops. They're just like songs, like yeah. you know, verse, chorus, bridge kind yeah. of stuff. But well, think of a chorus as like well, kind it's of just like a an drop. amped up chorus. So really? it's basically taking think the concept of, like a... of what the hook is, but mm. instead of like giving you a hook, it's just stripping something super fast from you and like leading you something into totally new. Stripping something like like, 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 of... like the drop, like just boom, we're out of what we were just talking about, like what we were just feeling. Yeah. Well, think well, of like a chorus. You said a, you said a chorus. Right? I don't know. Yeah. That's like the main theme of a song, right? Okay. The hook. Yeah. Okay. So, so then, the drop is so, the hook. So then, like, think of like the drop is in like. Like the whole the whole song, you're thinking like it's all great, and then you're waiting for the chorus because the chorus is so dope, and it's like the main part of that song, the meat and potatoes of that song. Something that you remember, like the the, so the drop the part isn't you, the one part moment. That, then the part that you jam out to. No, the drop would be. Would like, you consider like when it, when it, when the song does drop and that whole part after it? That's yeah, like drop until, is until like it goes until like it. Okay, bar. see that's yeah. back down. I think that's a good perspective on yeah. that because I think a yeah. lot of people like when when people say it's drop, like, right, well, when they yeah. talk about the oh the drop the yeah. drop when people talk about like in songs immediately you're thinking like waiting mm. for like this build up to go uh you know just like stop the build up yeah. and go to the next well, that's thing that's the beginning of it yeah for sure it's like you have this build up and you have this drop that mm. leads into the you know the main part of the song but I don't. I think a lot of people when they ta- say drop outside of electronic world of yeah. course when they say drop they're not actually even referring to the hook they're thinking like that moment it changes to the hook oh and you're talking about like uh, like the bar right before it actually goes, goes to the chorus uh, boom, 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 you know like yeah, yeah. and I think a lot of people like were, the fill mm, like yeah. the fill right before yeah, it kinda, goes, yeah they like kind of talk about that whole little section but yeah. they like don't talk goes, about the hook of the song put your fucking hands up boom yeah. yeah. okay so yeah. what comes after that yeah. is the drop boom yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and I mean that's just the part where everything that the song has been building up to it releases is the release. it releases there's, there's a tension and then in the release that's the part where people are dancing you and that's know, you know it releases that's, the endorphins yeah uh, that was a very good way that's, to put that it's the part where everything is hitting you full force um and yeah, it's just like this feeling of like euphoria. Yeah, I right, just very primal feeling of like I love that. Yeah. What's that? that was, what's that pink highlighted one right there? Does it say the deer? The deer? No, that says, well, the, says drop. the drop. We oh. literally just had that conversation. <laughs> oh, so basically, what the drop That's is the high. Shut up, Mark. <laughs> we Are already we talked about, the about drop it. Yet? Dude, the drop. You want to talk about the drop? Show the drop. I'm all ears. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah, you feel dumb now, huh? You feel dumb now. No, you know what? Go talk about it. So basically, tension and release, right? Yeah. The chorus. You know the, the chorus, chorus, the chorus the in chorus. like other types of music. You For know, those of you like, that don't know, Mark is like really chorus. about tension and release. <laughs> um... So I'm going to play a little bit of a devil's advocate mm. for electronic music because, you know, everyone, I'm sure you've heard this argument. Oh, we've heard um, every argument. In the world. I'm a guitar player. I've been grown up around a lot mm-hmm. of you know musicians, this and that. And the electronic scene came big, and everyone always had the same shit to say. It's like, that's not real mu- music. They're not real yeah. musicians. They don't know how to play an instrument. They're just pressing buttons. What mm-hmm. do you have to say about that? I'd say go eat Fuck shit, <laughs> kick rocks, and flip flops. No. Why are they hey, wrong? Hashtag no etiquette, man. Well, first hashtag- of all, first of all, I play guitar. I mean, not not great, but I still play. So yeah, but that's I'm talking about like the music musician. that you're making. Okay, great. <laughs> what, I, what I think that is that they're confused about. The difference between a music producer and a just DJ. Mm-hmm. So if if they're talking, I think they're talking specifically about the music, aren't they? I, I mean, mean, when you say pressing buttons, that I mean, there is there's definitely a performance factor where it's like they go on stage and they press buttons and like that's we we can ta- I want to tackle that for sure. Yeah. But also the idea it's like you know people say like oh how can you take all these like different sounds like okay. it's just like let grab ask, them and put them together. Let me, you know? let me ask you this. Do they do they understand what a MIDI what a MIDI is what it stands for? Well, that's what I'm saying. These they probably not. So 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 let's 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 talk about this. What what is what is a MIDI? A musical instrument digital interface. Musical instrument. The two keywords. Musical. One more time. Instrument. So if 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 a producer is using a musical instrument in a digital interface, is that not using an instrument? So uh, music? so the argument is like you didn't play that instrument to make that sound. Well, you know? I think no, no, you are playing it though. Like whenever we're like whenever we're doing like a MIDI track, right? We're making chords or whatever. Fuck yeah, we're we're drawing in those chords. So we're, we're, I mean, we're not physically playing it, but we're drawing them in. But it still I, takes the right same amount of knowledge, and it still takes yes, work to do it. Yes, yes. Yeah, and it, I think I think that's the realm of people aren't, aren't understanding. Yeah, that needs to be exposed a lot more. That was a of, of course. Uh, it it it, it, that? it doesn't <laughs> take the technical uh, skill of playing it, but it still takes the music theory knowledge and the knowledge of music to to plug it in. I mean, it's pretty fucking do clear they, when someone doesn't know what they're doing. And yeah, they absolutely. Do Let me ask you them this: do they, do they consider a conductor not a musician? 
Well, I, w- I wonder because technically he's not playing an instrument, but he's in theory playing all the instruments, right? Yeah, but even a producer is like has an active hand making the sound. Well, you know. Well, so I I would say just real simply, the process doesn't like just because the process is different, it doesn't mean that the outcome isn't music. Because the process, we're not playing an instrument. You're right. We're like, we're. It's all done on our computer. A lot of people do literally play everything in, but what we're doing is I mean, mostly we've, we've sound actually, design. We've actually, physically played instruments before. Definitely, but, and, and put them but, into songs. But majority of the time, that's not what we're doing. Yeah. But that's I don't the think thing, a lot of people that dev never mess with MIDI they don't understand. Like when you're doing MIDI, like you may you can choose a sound, but it's like it's no different than like having a guitar. The guitar makes a sound. You know the notes to play, right? Yeah. You just having a preset sound, but you're still having to play those notes. Yeah. And build I mean, those chords. like. To take it even a step further, we, we we and other people make our own sounds. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing. That's the your, idea of taking your, a synthesizer a and world. creating a sound, I mean, that is fucking, like you said, tedious work, but yeah. a wild, well, wild but concept the to thing me. Is, yeah, I, I love that. I, I actually, I don't really classify, I don't know how Mark feels, but I don't classify myself as a musician. Mm-hmm. I call myself a producer, and nice. I say that I make music, but I don't say I'm not... I'm not claiming that I'm a musician. So would you say because you're a DJ? I think there is a my difference. biggest oh, well, problem with that DJ statement. DJ producer, yeah. My biggest problem with that statement that that you said, Hike, mm-hmm. what people what people say is that it's not real music. That's my biggest problem is because this is music. Yeah, a hundred percent, it's music. It's on iTunes charts. It's at festivals. Well, it doesn't like, make it music. It, I think no. the way it makes you feel makes it music. Yeah. What? Well, okay. But also, that, you know, because of the way it makes people feel. It That's is a, on iTunes. It is at festivals. Exactly. It is, so it Thank is you. music. Well, but okay. So let's let's take. There's... Well, I will say this, and this is not about electronic, because I do I do dig what you, I think what you guys do is I was like I said I do not agree with this, what I had told you. I think one thousand percent. Of course, um, of course. But I was going for a walk with my girlfriend one time. We were in Santa Monica, and there was like this roof party going mm-hmm. on with this shit fucking rap song with this guy that yeah. was whining and mumbling. You couldn't understand what he was yeah, saying, yeah. and the the track wasn't even good. How is that music? Well, and I and I kind of I told her I was like you know it's making it's making uh it's making people feel something and she's like well here's what, she's like honestly I guess I don't have the right words to say it but that may be a song but it's yeah. not music yeah. and I that I I can't yet explain that to full extent I'm not gonna mm-hmm. sit here and try to pretend but something about that statement was more true than anything else there are songs but they may they it can be something can be a song but it also can't be music like that's not music and that's just a matter of defining what music is I think that's all per, that's all an opinion too. Uh, of course I mean it's it's you know for sure but I think you take a song like that's just mumbling whining with a fucking shitty track I mean, and I, you compare it to what you guys are I doing mean, that's honestly, like I'm, I'm personally yeah. a fan of that but it, it charts well that music charts oh I don't care about don't, charts that's fucking garbage but no, I don't I, think. I agree I agree, <laughs> I agree. It's, I'm not a fan of it but I mean dude it but, it's it's received very well by, by a lot of people. But I don't think that interesting. I don't think that the charting part plays any part into the conversation. Let me put it this way: music. there was a there was an artist that sure does took paint sure. and shoved it up his ass. Are you listening? An artist took paint, shoved it up his ass, and farted all over a canvas. I mean, that's art, and it sold for millions of dollars. That's not fucking art. That's garbage. I went to MoMA, New York, mm-hmm. New York MoMA, right? Yeah. I walked in, and the, you know what the priceless piece of art was? There was a Target seal fan on a string hanging in a room on. <laughs> I mean that's I, fucking we can get into fucking gar- fine art like, well I mean that the, that's the point it's like is... you can call it art all day but that's fucking bullshit yeah I, I mean that's ridiculous J- yeah. just going back to the argument though about like is you know when people are saying that that's not music talking about electronic music I don't um, agree with it I no I mean either. I don't not agree with it uh, especially it's I mean I could point out the easiest thing which is like there's you know future bass which is a genre the whole thing is melodic. The whole thing is like, it's built around chords. Mm-hmm. The drop is all melodic too. It's almost that's more theory based than anything than other music, yeah, to be that's honest. Clearly, <laughs> it kind of is. I that's mean, you have to clearly yeah. music. But then, yeah, you could go to like uh, a techno track that's super minimal and is just like, it's just your kick, just going boom, boom, boom. But boom. hey, and it's just your bass like yeah. doing some like some movements like, and some mm-hmm. drums, like, you like know, just a, a rolling snare. bass going a- along with it. And like, yeah, I get the argument more for that, but the fact of the matter is it's making people move. Like, would they say the same thing about a drum circle in Africa and a bunch of people like playing uh, like just really intricate drum well, no, patterns? No, because they're, you know, they're playing real drums. You know? So is that, so then, so then, shit. so then the pro- they're saying that the process defines the outcome. Exactly. You know what? 
fucking say that again. The process defines the outcome, that's which bullshit. I don't, yeah, that's bullshit. I'm so happy you said that. I'm I'm really glad that you. I, I yeah. love. I was I was really excited to ask that question because I wanted mm. to hear like people that are in it doing it answer yeah. that question. And, well, uh, yeah. the actual definition of music is either vocals or instruments combined together or just separately to um, to form sounds that affect one um, emotionally. Did you just look that up? Absolutely. <laughs> you want to read it? I do. <laughs> not pretend like you Vocal fucking just or memorized instrumental it. instrumental sounds or both <laughs> combined <laughs> in such a way as to produce a beauty of form, which I just fucking said, <laughs> and expression of emotion. Yeah. Okay. So that's exactly what it is. Yeah. I mean, I think what it just comes down to is somebody doesn't like that have music. Yeah. And then maybe they think that because someone's not playing an instrument that it takes no skill. Um, Man, I could play guitar way easier than I could run a fucking board. It's, it's <laughs> I could like, run a pad, samples. I dude, that shit is a whole other language no, to me. It's and it's vice versa for us. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just it's a different type of skill. And I kind of get that someone's like I've spent years and years perfecting my craft, and then someone's able to go in a, a piano. Uh, let, let's say someone's able to go in and yeah. then do all this stuff just with MIDI Mm -hmm. and you know I have to like spend decades of my life to be able to do that that's your choice yeah I mean it it doesn't (laughs) like first of all I think you you can never really replicate the human quality of it Mm -hmm. so there's always that but also like I I don't know I just I think if you're not willing to adapt and take pride in what you do no matter what then you're not you don't, have a pl- you don't have a place in a thing as ruthless as, you know, the music industry yeah. or the process of yeah, it. Yeah. Well, you can take, like, the, the human elements of that and, and apply it to, you know, MIDI, if we're talking about MIDI. As a pianist, I mean, you're, you're, you're very skillful. Probably more Are you more kidding? Skillful, if you're a pianist and you yeah. fucking run a MIDI board, it's game over. Yeah. yeah no, exactly yeah. what I'm saying. So yeah. it's like, why not do yeah. that as well? Why not? I love that, guys. You know, people would always say that, like, when Skrillex was becoming a big thing, people would always make the argument that it's like... You know, there would be people saying, oh, it's not music. Um, and meanwhile, you know, this guy was in, this guy was in, I guess it doesn't play that much relevance to whether or not his Skrillex project is actually music, but he was in like this band Oh, forever. Emily, that song that is, no yeah, one in the world like I, Emily. I'm not a huge fan of that project, but. I'm not either. <laughs> uh, but he, <laughs> but he shreds. Yeah. Like he, he uh, plays guitar. Mm-hmm. And he fucking shreds on it. And then he does sing. And then, like, I think he plays the piano as well. Talented this guy. is a musically um, inclined dude. Yeah. Yeah. And and then all all it is is a different medium that someone is using. Yeah. It's just using, like, like more so electronic-based. Yeah. Like, like, physically electronic-based. I wonder if people have the same argument about artists that use digital things instead of, like, paint paintbrush and canvas. It's like saying a graphic designer is not an artist. Yeah, yeah, no, precisely. Well, but or even like, are they? Do, do, do they say that about like video game artists that like have yeah, the same. whole uh, uh, stylus and? Oh, because they're not using everything. pen and paper. Yeah, you like know? I wonder if the Excuse same me. argument is applied. Ah, uh, yeah, that's that's a very good point. That's a very very good point. I think, uh, like I said, I think adaptation is a huge factor. I think you need to take pride in what you do, and I think that. Uh, the things that succeed in the process of technology growing are all things that are only going to yeah. make mm. the industry and the product better, and mm. you need to understand that. That it's just one more tool to create yeah. something that you're feeling, to get something but across. I I do, like... Just, just you're talking about... Well, you're talking about, like, things, um, like... You're talking about you have to like get with the times, and like a lot of these things are just different tools that that you can use to get your message across and get yeah. this emotion across. But then there are like programs that you can have now where you literally say what key you want to do, and then it writes a chord progression. Are you kidding? I have Pro Tools. I remember when I was using it that one yeah. for a few years. I uh, put down like drums, four different guitar parts, some yeah. bass, some vocals, and there's like a button. It would fucking chart it like an or- yeah. for an orchestra yeah that's all crazy. different parts one yeah. button yeah that's crazy but yeah, I, have, I, have I, such, I, have I feel like that takes that. away it yeah, takes away like, like the learning curve from people you know but someone who knows their chord progressions and you know like we just said like the pianist thing 
they're going to do a hell of a lot better than a program. Well, it's the thing. It's like, you know, and that's why it's important to stand by what we do because, like, no matter what, it's, you know, the advancement should help you get your message across. But, you know, someone that knows their shit as a, compared to someone mm-hmm. that doesn't know their shit is going to happen. Definitely, yeah. You can't, you can't beat that. There's Yeah, there's, there's a always going to be that. a need for the humans' humans' ability to do something. Yeah. yeah. You know, to be good at what they're doing and good at what they are. I agree. Yeah. And especially uh, to understand it. Uh, Yeah, definitely. And that's how bounds are broken too, you know, like, yeah. and new things are, are created. Fuck yeah. It's, it's sometimes even With through no like, like fuck ups. Hell yeah. You Name know? drop. <laughs> Name drop. drop. Well, boys, uh, before we go, do you have any advice for anybody out there that wants to start a career in electronic music? Dude, I would 100% say, and this isn't a sound cliche, but I'm going to say it anyways, because I would have appreciated hearing this. Is that never ever stop with with your passion, you know? Never never lose drive for that. And if you have to, you know, take a break for a moment, that's okay. Just never stop though. You know, never stop pushing. Always continue creating. And one thing I would say is, if you're early on or if, if you're late to the game, just find a brand that you want to run with and that you want to stick by, because that that's. That can make a that can make a huge difference whether it makes or breaks you as a project. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lovely. Beautiful. Just basically off of that, like you just gotta you gotta love what you're doing, and you really have to you know speaking specifically for people for people doing like EDM, you have to find like a genre and your own sound that you like love enough that it just excites you mm-hmm. all the time to like get up and do it because this industry is like we're learning more and more it's tough um and if you are doing it for the wrong reasons and if you're not just in love with what you're doing like it it's really easy yeah, to just give up burn out yeah you'll burn out and like you you'll quit the core but value you, has to be passion yeah if you but if you really just are in love with the stuff you're doing and are excited about it then that will carry you through because you can just hold on to that and just uh like let that carry you through all like the hard times mm-hmm. another thing is hardship. make goals you know make a goal like say how hey i want i want to reach an extra thousand um fans Mm. this year or whatever it may be like I want to have you know make a Facebook page for yeah, my goals are important for my uh, like a music page on my Facebook or whatever it is and um, subtle I wanna, things I, I want to reach a thousand new Facebook likes in six months or wh- whatever it is I want to have 12 tracks in my in my sound bank to, to, to release for like the whole entire year I want to have that saved up ready to go yeah I want to collab with this artist um, by XYZ date or honestly just, just make goals uh, make some goals that are you know a little a little bit more attainable and then also make some goals that are a might, might seem a bit uh, unrealistic because you'd be surprised at what you write down actually can happen and come true rock and roll guys rock and roll rock any and last roll. words hey, name hashtag drop, no etiquette name drop, hashtag name well drop. everyone go look up no etiquette music they're on Spotify they're on Apple Music yes, yes. 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 On everywhere right yeah. yes pretty, yeah. everywhere you guys are fucking awesome this has been so much you're fun you're awesome bro um, Mark Eddie no etiquette music rock and roll dude my oh, yeah. man peace later